Hello and uh, welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. Uh, and I'm delighted. To, do you know, Alex, I should have totally asked you this before I started. How do I pronounce your surname? Is it Alves? Alves, yeah, that's good. Alves. Oh, I, see, I should have just gone with that. You know, I wouldn't have had to pause. <laughs> you know what? No one gets that right first time, so well done, can't you? It's usually Alves. <laughs> So I've got to hold on to that, right? So I'm, <laughs> I'm joined with Alex Alves from Dundee and Angus College on the interesting topic of flipped lessons, which is not a new concept, but you don't always meet someone who's actually been practicing the flipped approach for, for quite a long time. How, how long is it now, Alex? That'd be about two, three years now. Two, three years. So I feel if anyone is going to tell us about what it's really like to deliver on the flipped approach, it's going to be you. So, <laughs> tell us more. Okay, yeah, so, I mean, I'll just uh, give a little quick resume of me. Um, I, and obviously, I'd like to thank Kenji and Tina and Jason as well for having me on and for all the jumping about you have to do this morning. I'd like to apologise to everyone that's here now. If you were here this morning, sorry, internet problems. Remote delivery at its best, obviously. Um, I teach across various subjects. Networking, cybersecurity, foundation apprentices, modern apprentices. I'm a workplace assessor and I'm fortunate enough to be on the graduate apprenticeship scheme at Glasgow Caledonian University at the moment. I'm doing a BSc honours in cybersecurity. Uh, and from that point of view, I'd just like to thank Skills Development Scotland for funding it <laughs> and for uh, Dundee and Angus College for giving me the time off and support to do it. Much appreciated. Okay, okay. So that's just a little bit about me. I've been teaching for full time for about 10 years now. Um, love being a lecturer, I have to admit. Um, and I love being a lecturer at Dundee Angus College. It, it's a great college and they encourage you to try new things um, and to promote uh, good practice. So that's me got with in for the college now. <laughs> but they do, it's, it's a total pleasure. So from my point of view, about two or three years ago, um, SQA changed a, a subject I was teaching called server admin, server, server administration. It became very theory oriented to the point where it was assessed at the end of the unit by a 60 question multi-choice theory test. And there wasn't a lot of time for practical. Um, now, that year I found that students were in this, well, they were Speaking back in the survey and we're speaking about it in the quarters as well. And they started to call that class death by PowerPoint. Um, and I've got to say, that's not something you want your class to be called. And so I sat back and I said to myself, okay, what am I going to do? Because I need those two hours for all this theory. But I knew myself, it was, I mean, I was born myself standing up there in that traditional way, presenting in front of a smart board, you know, and discussing things with them. But what I find a lot with that as well is that some students think that's all they need to do. Come into the class, listen to the PowerPoint, listen to you speak, and then away they go. And then move on to the next class. And obviously, when it comes around to assessments, that obviously turns out not to be quite the case. So from that point of view, I was like, OK, what am I going to do to give myself time for practical work and to stop maybe boring them a little bit to a certain degree? Um, and I thought to myself, you know what? I'll give them control of their own learning. You know, I'll put it in their hands. Um, but how am I going to do that? So obviously I have presentations which I put out to the students, but what I thought to myself was, I'm going to put out the presentations a week before. I'm going to let them read over the work. And then the following week when they come in, we'll have a discussion. And then I thought to myself, well, discussion's good, but it doesn't really validate it for me. It doesn't let me know that they're reading the presentations and that they're taking the work on board. So I thought to myself, what will I do? And I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll do my favourite thing, <laughs> which is a Kahoot quiz. I love a Kahoot quiz. Um, it gets the students engaged. They have a bit of a laugh. And it gets you talking to them, you talk to the classmates, to talk to you. And it definitely helps to build relationships that way. And you can put in some general knowledge questions as well make it maybe that little bit funnier um, you can add specific topics that you might you might not usually talk about in IT so for instance one of my questions in uh, would be in Kahoot would be true or false Alan Turing was persecuted for his sexual beliefs or his sexual orientation do you know what I mean and which kind of couples up IT 
with different topics and then it means you can maybe there will always be someone in the chat that maybe doesn't know who Alan Turing is so obviously at that point you're asked to leave the course because if you're a computing student you don't know Alan Turing there's going to be trouble um, and then someone usually puts in the imitation game with Benedict Cumberbatch and then people get talking about that and then you can be talking about the fact you know that it was actually illegal to be gay at one point in the UK and there's students that don't even realise that fact and that gets everybody talking as well and engaging. And it's not just about my BTSM degree as well, although that's incorporated into it. Um, and from my point of view, I really like that. It really helps. So it's good to think about specific questions. And, and I also do a little, I also always do a lock or a lake monster. Um, and now I'm getting students emailing me to say, <laughs> which lock is it this week? Or which lake is it this week? So not only are they studying for their IT, they're now going and looking at Scottish Lock and Wake Monsters. <laughs> and yeah, it is. It, it, for embedding equality and diversity as well, because you can bring up different subjects. It's about respect as well. Respecting different people and different points of view, whether you agree with them or not, you need to be respecting them. And that's a big thing to put across for me as well. It's life skills for students. It's not just about IT. We're getting them ready to go to university, get a job, or move on even wherever you may be, but secondary school going on to further years. And they need that kind of skill line, I think, to a certain degree. It also encourages them to manage their time. Because basically what I'm saying to them is, there's the presentations. It's up to you when you go and look at them before next week, but you're doing it out with your normal college time. So having to actually timetable for themselves for me, that is a top priority. Um, whether it be university, work, or life in general, you need to be able to manage your time. And I think sometimes we've got away from maybe, because you would you call it homework to a certain degree. I think some, we've got away from that a little bit. But the fact is, you know, the students are always told this is a two and a half day course, and it's full time, but you will be expected to do work out with. And if you go on to university, as I am at the moment, and I can assure you, you're definitely going to be doing work out with. Um, because it is full on, to be fair. And again, it's getting them ready for that too. Don't get me wrong, it's not quite as hands-off because you still need that hands-on approach. But I find the flipped learning model, it, it really helps you with that because the fact of the matter is, what I find is the students come in, we'll do the Kahoot quiz. Now, obviously it means maybe doing a little bit more for your presentation. So I know that obviously we're trying to make them as interactive as possible. So I'm trying to look, I'm putting videos in, I'm, you know, I'm putting links into websites and I'm putting text in. And at the moment I'm experimenting with um, the video in PowerPoint because that actually puts you in PowerPoint. So you're at the bottom right hand corner, the slides are coming up, you're actually able there to have, pen, have your class at the same time if you like. And they can then go back and watch that anytime they want because I, obviously I deliver it through Teams. I record the sessions, the sessions go straight into the chat. And that means that they can come back at any time and watch those sessions again. So it's great for revision as well. And the same with Kahoot, because the fact is you can publish Kahoot quizzes and you can say, you know, you can have 20 goes at this. So if it's coming up towards assessment time as well, it works as a form of assessment perfectly. And to the point now where when I go, like even today, or sorry, yesterday's even better example, First year networkers, first time back. Um, <laughs> and obviously no presentations because they're a great class, to be fair. They're really ahead of the work. So yesterday was about, you know, calming any worries about the time off that's been missed and things like that and how things are going to evolve. Um, and during the conversation in Teams, students start to put in the chat and we're not getting a Kahoot quiz today. I was like, well, um, I've not given you any presentations on it. I said, well, I'll tell you what then. You know what? You give me a topic and I will see if there is one in Kahoot for you. Because Kahoot has discoverable uh, quizzes, which I'll demo for you as well in a wee while. Um, but you've got to be aware with them. And I will get to that, to be fair, because it's an open platform, folks. <laughs> so you have to watch anybody can post on it. And um, so I asked for the topic and someone said Formula One. Now, okay. That's a bit of a narrow subject, and there's only probably a few people in the class that would maybe ask the question. I'd be able to answer questions, including me. Don't get me wrong, because I love Formula One. Um, and then someone said Donald Trump, and I thought 
that is brilliant to be fair. <laughs> it's pertinent, it's to do with politics, and we're, and we're using Kahoot at the same time. So I went and I, I've got to tell you, there is a lot of quizzes on Kahoot and um, referring to Donald Trump. But I would say you definitely need to check them first before you um, share them with your students. <laughs> because um, some of them are written by people that let's just say, are Trump supporters, and some of them are written by people that aren't Trump supporters, and you're kind of looking for that middle ground. <laughs> so be aware of that, okay? And there obviously there's people that put things up um, just to be annoying. You know, they'll put up the wrong questions, or they'll put up the right questions and the wrong answers. So you have to make sure first before you do any of that. Okay, okay. So and I saw you as well there, Kenji, putting up about people not doing their homework. So... <clears throat> Kahoot's brilliant for that because the fact is, my presentations obviously, I'm sorry, my Kahoot quizzes obviously cover that presentation or two or three presentations, whatever it is I'm getting them to read over. So as you go through Kahoot, you can see if, say, for instance, you come to a question and of the class of, say, 20, 15 people all get it wrong. Now, that's maybe not so much to do with not doing their homework. That's maybe more to do with the fact that that's a part of the presentation of the information that they don't get. And you can see it as a class that they don't get. And at that point, what I normally do is pause the Kahoot and have a little mini lesson on that specific bit. And of course, that's being recorded at the same time within my team's environment. So that's there for them to go back to. And, and then we can go back into the Kahoot. <clears throat> but if you do see, I mean, if, if you, you can see as well if people are not um, reading over the presentations because what you find is obviously you'll find a lot of questions where a lot of people are not getting them right and at that point it's more a gentle reminder obviously that they need to be reading the information or we'll go back to the old traditional way where they have to just stand and listen to me and, and it, don't get me wrong I'm sure they all love that <laughs> um, but it also works from the point of view that Say, for instance, and now not well, even in this remote environment, then you've got students that just don't, you know, they need a more hands on approach. Not all students are great at that. If you've got, you know, no need for students to attend. Um, well, the actual session, the Kahoot session, is what kicks it off. Susan, if you like, Suzanne, sorry. And um, that's what's bringing them in in the first place. And then that's freeing up lots of time for them then to do practical work in the class with me. So it gives me that extra time to do practical work, which is reinforcing it all the time. Because obviously you've got the presentations, the read over that, the come in and do their Kahoot, that reinforces that information again. And then they've got time for their practical labs, which obviously is pertinent to me because I'm computing. So obviously a lot of my classes do have practical labs that go along with them. And even if they don't, I can still generate ones for them. So it all feeds into one big round scope, if you like. It's not just about the presentations. And I know that when I mentioned the PowerPoint one to one of my colleagues, and um, what he actually said in the chat was, oh, does that mean then that they don't need us anymore? Uh, and, and the fact is, they're always going to need us. Um, that information that we partake, whether it be putting it across them in that format that they can understand. Let's face it, everybody can be an expert at something, and I've seen lots of experts come and go within the college. I've actually seen one expert go after two hours. Two hours less and came back out, walked straight out the door. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard thing to do. Um, so I think it's part of a whole scheme of things. It's not just that one thing. And it's about getting them to buy into that. But the fact is, it's their responsibility as much as it's our responsibility to get that information over them. It's their responsibility to be taking that time to take it on board as well you know I think some you do get some students that think well it's your fault and um, you've not put that across I don't understand any of that and it's like well from this method you can really see if that's working who's not understanding and again obviously you can see from the question feedback what the story is as well and how much the students are engaging in it and what I find to keep them engaged is I um, have created a league so if you're first you get 20 points your second, you get 10 points. And if you're third, you get five points. And I've kept a league table throughout the year. And when it comes to the end of the year, the top three people are going to get um, prizes. I can't say what the prizes are because I haven't told them. 
Um, uh, they're going to be a surprise, and obviously, if anybody watches this back at some point, they'll know. Um, I am getting the prizes myself, though, for them. And you know what? It creates friendly banter. You know, because uh, people start going, "Oh, well, I, you know, I got that right. Oh, no, I can't believe I got that wrong," and all this kind of thing. And then um, that again encourages engagement. To be fair, best tool to use because it's true. So, um, you know what? I find it really lends itself to it. Um, because the fact is, at the end of a Kahoot quiz, it will immediately do a small, like, limited report for you, and it'll tell you the questions that we got wrong, the, like, really wrong. So even at that point, you could go through the Kahoot quiz, if you like, wait till you get to the end, see the questions that we got most wrong, and then break out and do a wee lesson on that. But going back to the people that, you know, it maybe doesn't suit, because it's not just about not doing their homework, if you like. For some people, you know, they need that more hands-on experience. But I find this gives you the time for it. Because when I was in class doing this, um, the students that had taken on the information, they would get on with, go on and get on with the practical work and be away doing that. And that left me time to target, you know, the specific students that maybe didn't take it quite on board like that and give them the extra time. Whereas if in the traditional environment, you run out of that time because you're teaching everything. And then you're trying to go back to the things that are maybe that little bit trickier. So what I find with this is the things that are far more straightforward, they're taking that on board quite easily. So then that leaves you the opportunity to target the things you could maybe do with doing a little bit extra on or a little bit more work. And I find that works extremely well. Um, obviously, there's different... Um, tools that you can use. I use Kahoot, it's free, <laughs> which is always good. You can pay for extras on it if you want, but I have never found myself going, oh, I wish I had that. I built Kahoot's way up. Each student contributed one question, saved work for me, and got them in. That's good as well, a certain degree. It's getting them to go and do things themselves, um, to empower them, if you like, to a certain degree, and saying, this is your education. <laughs> you know, take control of it. Um, and don't get me wrong, it's probably easier for, say, I'd say first, second year is much easier. I mean, my second years right now, obviously, um, I, I'm, I'm, I specialise in networking. And um, my second year networkers, obviously, were first year networkers before all of this kicked off. And they'd been using this. So what I found was when they went into remote learning, it was a far easier transition for them because they'd already technically kind of been doing it themselves anyway. Plus, from a Cisco point of view, which is what I kind of teach, um, we've been using Teams for about five years with our networking students, because obviously we used to, if you've got two networking classes and you're delivering the same theory to them, then what we found was, well, that's fine. Well, one person can deliver that theory and the, the two classes can just be in the Teams which again, frees up more time for you to do practical work with them. So you can have multiple classes. You know what, I mean, I imagine it'll be the same for yourselves, you know, subjects getting taught across maybe two or three units being taught, taught across two or three subjects that are the same, like computer system fundamentals for us and things like that. And it means that all those classes can be into one class, if you like to a certain degree. Um, and it, it works remotely as well, because obviously it means that my students that are getting it can go away, do their stuff, and then I can then concentrate with the specific students. And you can do breakouts with them in Teams as well now, which is great if you've got the latest version of Teams, obviously. Um, and I also find with the Teams side of it, um, much better for one-to-ones. Um, they're far more willing to chat. Um, a lot of more students that are, say, nervous and things like that, I find the chat a lot more using this. Lots of different options like this. MS Forms, Google Forms, yeah, 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 definitely there is. Um, I, I think the way Kahoot sets it out is quite nice, though, as well, to be fair. So for me, it's not just about server admin anymore for me. Um, client operating systems, I'm using the flip model for that. Project management, using the flip model for that as well. And as you can tell, with things like project management, you get the theory side done out of the way. That leaves you the whole class to actually be using the software. And don't get me wrong, you know, the theory is important, but I'm a big fan of practical work, hands-on, actually doing it. And if you couple them up, then what I've found is 
my first time pass rates for server admin, the first year of doing this went up by about 25 or 30%. Um, so it made a big difference, to be fair. Obviously, as you go lower down, you know, on the certificate level and things like that, you're not forcing that fives and all that kind of thing. It might not be quite as easy to use, especially in a remote environment where, you know, it's maybe hard to keep on top and make sure they're doing things. But I am trialing it with them, some FAs at the moment, and it seems to be going okay. They seem to be enjoying it, and the feedback's good, and they're, they're managing to answer the questions. So hopefully that will continue to go that way. Um, so for me, I think it lends itself to pretty much the majority of subjects. Um, and if you do have a subject that's all theory, then it means that, that you can then sit down and look at that subject and go, right, I can actually develop practical things for them to go away and do in this time because I've got that time free now. And those things will help reinforce all the theory. GPC is also a post matter staff at the student level is higher. Okay, yeah, definitely. Um, I think it makes them believe in themselves a bit more as well, to a certain degree. Um, so from that point of view, I've had a great experience. I mean, there's loads of pros. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my notes from my pros because I, I, I don't want to forget any of them. <laughs> so, I mean, we're looking at, when I look at the pros, okay, you can open the Kahoot so it's a revision tool for your formative stuff. Um, your students need to manage their own time. They need to get used to that. Um, your presentation information is reinforced by the Kahoot and then by the practical tests. The leak means the students, you know, to get into it and get involved with it. Um, remote learning is easier for them because the transition is straightforward because they're technically kind of doing that already. First time pass rates up. Um, what else have we got now? It, it lends itself most subjects. And then um, I am not, server admin is no longer called death by PowerPoint. So, that's a big plus for me because honestly, see when it comes up in the student survey, okay, they're not maybe not being specific, but you can tell it's about you. <laughs> You're like, no. Because <laughs> obviously we all want to do well, we all want to be great lecturers and teachers and all the rest of it. Um, and I found this has totally changed things around for me. Um, I will continue to use this when we eventually, hopefully soon, get back into that face-to-face um, -face learning environment because nothing beats being able to see the students' faces um, and get that input back to you. Because I know it's like sometimes online, some people don't like putting on their webcams and things like that. And it's hard to get back from them what's going on board. So I find this, this encourages that as well because they're all going, let's get a Kahoot, let's do this. I mean, emailing me to say, can we get a Kahoot this week? So what they're basically doing is emailing me for a test. That's what they're doing, but they love it. I mean, and I love that as well. People go, right, we're going to have an assessment this week. Oh, no. Okay, we're going to have a Kahoot. Yeah, great. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> Sorry, but it's. Um, but they don't see it that way, and that's what's good about it, and that's why I like it. Now, I will quickly, um, and I'm, I'm aware of time as well here, to be fair. So I'll quickly share my screen and just show you my Kahoot, folks. Okay. Okay, so this is my Kahoot. Here, okay. I'll just log into it now. You can just sign up, it's free. Like I say, it will at some point ask you if you want to pay more money to get more things, but um, you don't need to, you really don't. Now, I just need to remember my password. I've just logged in my college one and not my college password, obviously. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> you know, it's like you get that minute. Is that my password? So, okay, yeah. So you can go, this is what I always am, continue for free, or you can go pro and premium. But honestly, I, if you need that, fine. But I, I've never needed it, folks. Okay, okay. So can I minimize you? Yeah, I'm just going to hide the thumbnails, folks. So you can see these are my cahoots here. So I've got all, I've got 26 there. And as you can see, so there's like client operating systems. And if you want, you can edit it. You can have a wee look. You can see it's visible at every one. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. 
So you can see my first question is usually <laughs> um, a mass question, and then obviously I have other ones. So true or false as well. Windows 10. Yeah, okay, fine. So we'll just exit that preview. But it's really easy to use because obviously all you need to do is click on create. If you click on create, where you go. Now, what I find is obviously, um, I'll create a new Kahoot. If you use some of these, it will come up and say you need to pay for these. But I just do it for the Kahoot. Now, you see the time limit there. And that makes a big difference for me. Um, it means that they can't go and search for the answers. So if it's a general knowledge, it will be 10, 10 seconds because it's general knowledge. And if it's about the actual presentations, it will be 20 seconds. And the way Kahoot works is um, it starts off, I think, at 1,000 points, yes. And then as time ticks by, you get less marks for getting it right. That, for me, is perfect. <clears throat> because the fact of the matter is, if somebody is going and searching for the answers, they will maybe get them all right, but they'll get a very low score. <laughs> And it will show you again that mm, maybe that person is um, doing a bit of research during the actual test. So it kind of uh, forces them, if you like, to have a go, even if they haven't got the information. And it's the best way to do it, I think. And then you can just add questions from the question bank. So, or you can do, I, I just go add question. You can go question, go true or false. If you go into puzzles and polls and things like that, you can see it there. It's got the premium sign against it. It wants you to pay money. So a quiz is just a standard question, and then you can put in your answers, and then you obviously have to select which one is the correct answer. Okay, so if I put in Alec there even, it will give me the opportunity to then tick that and say, that's the correct answer. If you try to leave a, a Kahoot without that, um, it will tell you that there's questions that still have answers. Like you'd see an exclamation mark there straight away. It's like, you've not done this question, Alec. And you can obviously do true or falses as well. It's really straightforward. And again, is that right? Is that wrong? Um, and obviously, you can put background images in. I always do that as well, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And the fact is, you can do ones that are specific. So science and technology, things like that. So I tend to put things in that are specific to that course as well. And just to keep it happier for them. So you can do that. You put that channel in. Boom, up we go. OK. And then you save it. You can just say done. And it's going to say there, look, fix, question missing, answers missing, correct answer. You can keep as a draft and you can go back and say edit. So I'll just keep that as a draft. Okay, so if I go back to my actual cahoots, cool. So if we click on this one, let's just click on that. So there's one I've created. So all you need to do then is go play. And if you teach them a sign, now, if you're assigning, it means that they can play it multiple times. They can go back to it or the teaching method. So this is the teaching method. And obviously, I go, you can have team mode, but I go classic because obviously it's a league. The pin will come up in a minute. And away you go. Now, they can do this on their phones or on their PCs. Um, and they tend to love it, to be fair, or in my experience they have. Now, just one last thing, folks. I know I'm probably running out of time. It will not start now. It will come back. Yeah. This is what I'm doing because of that top bit there. <laughs> now, I'm just trying to move something, folks. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> I couldn't see for that. There we go. Okie dokie. Now, the last one here is discover. You can look for other ones that have already been done. So, introduction to networks, I teach that. Or even just Cisco. Let's see Cisco. Let's see if there's any Cisco cahoots. There you go. Cisco networking. Cisco VLAN, Cisco Introduction and Networking, that's a whole course. But again, obviously, if you do click on these, um, get the answers and the questions, just to make sure everything is right. And then you can go ahead and use it, because sometimes people um, put swear words in and things like that. I mean, it's very, 
It's not very often at all, but sometimes they do. And then sometimes put up, people put up answers where, which they think are right, but are actually wrong. So you have to be aware of that. Okay. Okay. So we'll come back. Okay, Alan, you know, we're, we're coming up to the uh, almost our 30 minutes, but we, we probably do have time for uh, a couple of qu questions. Okay, if, by the way. Here has, has a question. Um, I'm just going to bring us back to the, the gallery view for a sec. Good. Thank you. <laughs> I think, Jason, you had a question that you typed in. Um, yeah, very briefly, I thought I, I don't know if you've got any learners who are perhaps more reflective um, or m less competitive, and how does it play with them? Um, it it does. It, you know what? I, I, I know you're saying because obviously there might be some people that don't like that competitive side of things a little bit, but it's it's just about keeping it at a really friendly level and not allowing it to become something, you know, out of control. It's a bit of fun. I mean, I'm emphasizing that all the time. This is a bit of fun. And uh, I'm not showing the whole class scores. I'm showing the top three. Because if there's people that aren't scoring very well, I, you know, that's not something I want to, you know, push on and show on the screen to people. So it's only ever the top three, but uh, you find that, um, I mean, I had in my first year networkers, Lauren, um, she was quite low in the league standings. And in the last two weeks, she's just had back-to-back -back wins <laughs> and jumped to the top of the league. So now she's dishing out a little bit. But um, this is a funny thing. It's got to be jokey and it's got to be friendly. You know, I, I've emphasised the point, you know, that if the prizes aren't going to be like a thousand pounds or anything like that, they probably think they're going to be Dundee and Angus USB sticks. To be lucky, they'll probably done the Angus USB pens if they're lucky. <laughs> but yeah, it's about keeping it um, friendly. Okay. You have to um, check the USB stick for malware before you go. <laughs> well, I'm cyber security, so that has to be done. <laughs> that's that's unfortunately all we have time for for okay. this recorded element of the virtual bridge session. Um, so thanks for you, Alex, and um, take oh, your time you. um, to speak with us, um, and thanks for everyone to come along. Um, until we see you next time, stay safe.